how do you feel when uh, people attend your wedding, for example, and then regard that as a work expense? Well, look, um, Inga and I invited um, people to our wedding um, when we, uh, because we wanted them to come to our wedding because we regarded them as friends. Um, but Philip Ruddick, for example, said he, he, he was there because he was the Attorney General and you were Chairman of a Legal, legal Affairs Committee. Well, he was the Attorney and I was the Chairman, but uh, I invited Philip because uh, I respected him and uh, I liked him and uh, uh, we wanted him to be at our wedding. Interestingly enough, as the groom, when I made the traditional groom's speech at the reception, I looked right at Peter Costello and I said, the next Prime Minister of Australia is in the room. What I should have been doing is looking just at the next table uh, where Kevin Rudd was sitting uh, because uh, I was right, but I was looking in the wrong direction. So Kevin Rudd was there as well, Tony Abbott was there. How close were you to these people? Oh, look, uh, Kevin and I had done um, on 612 ABC Brisbane, uh, the Pete and Kev show for four or five years and uh, we managed to explode the persona that just because you happen to be on opposite sides of politics you automatically by definition hate the other person and so it came across as sort of two friends who who uh, disagreed on some things agreed on some things but we sort of I think uh, ran a pretty good show uh, and, and uh, Tony Abbott look, Tony Abbott um, and I have been very close uh, over the years in fact, I remember one occasion when Tony Abbott was passed over for a promotion and uh, Tony and I went out and he cried on my shoulder most of the afternoon. He cried on your shoulder? Uh, well, in, in the sense that he, he drowned his sorrows. Uh, he was certainly uh, uh, very upset uh, over the fact, I think it was Andrew Thompson might have been promoted. Uh, you know, and I, I sort of consoled him uh, and um, I suppose uh, one of my big regrets in life is that uh, my vote was the deciding vote that made him leader of the opposition and now of course he's Prime Minister. Now I just want to ask you about Clive Palmer because now he's, um, he looks like having the balance of power in the Senate, he's a fellow Queenslander. You were a member of his party for about seven hours weren't you? What happened there? Oh look, um, uh, I uh, didn't actually join. I had a meeting uh, with um, Clive's representatives and there was a provision under the Electoral Act uh, whereby if a sitting member of Parliament became a member of a party, there was not the necessity to obtain 500 members. And so I uh, signed um, a form and it was to be held essentially in escrow, uh, uh, not acted upon until the Monday while I thought about it over the weekend. So what happened? Uh, what went wrong? Well, what happened was um, uh, Clive Palmer's people rang me and said, oh, a mistake's been made. A media release has been sent out um, saying that you've joined the party. and. Uh, I withdrew my application and at the time I, I issued uh, a media release saying that I had withdrawn my application and I had not been a member of that party. You know, if you'd played your cards right, perhaps you would have been the Senate candidate ahead of Glenn, Glenn Lazarus. Oh, look, uh, I, I think that Clive Palmer's got a lot to offer this country. I greatly respect him. Uh, he's someone who uh, is a, thinks beyond the square and then he's a little bit different. Um, but uh, I think he's going to have a pretty big imp impact, particularly uh, with the election of uh, three Palmer United Party senators and with the uh, extra sort sure, of groupings about, that he's putting together. Is it together. about him and his interests or is it about the country? I think that um, Clive um, is motivated by what is good for the country. Um, you know, he's got plenty of money. Uh, he doesn't need money. Uh, I don't think that he would be doing what he's doing for his own personal gain. Uh, I, I think that uh, he obviously wants to make a difference um, and uh, given the, uh, uh, the power that he will uh, and the punch that he will have in the Senate, he certainly has that capacity and uh, I'd like to see him elected uh, as the member for Fairfax because I'm sure that we'd, we'll get a lot of f extra infrastructure on the Sunshine Coast. Then again, he got there by spending somewhere between eight and twelve million dollars. He's not quite sure how much. Is that, a, is that a, a, a trend that this country should be welcoming? Well, how much did the Liberal Party spend? Uh, how much did the National Party spend? How much did the Liberal National Party spend here in Queensland? How much did Labor spend? Uh, I, I do think um, it is a concern um, that uh, campaigning is becoming so expensive um, but uh, you know there's got to be one, one rule for the goose um, and the same ru ru rule for the gander and if it's okay for the Liberal and Labor parties to spend a fortune then uh, if Clive wants to spend his own money well that's a matter for him. And just finally after everything that you've been through 
Um, your wife Inga suggested she might one day go into politics herself. Is that still a dream? Look, um, Inga's been a tremendous support to me. She's very, very Im important, and I'm, I'm lucky actually to have the support of my entire family. But this whole Ashbrigade thing has had an incredible impact on both Inga and me, as well as our uh, wider families. Uh, we've had low-flying helicopters over our house. Uh, we, we sat in the dark um, for the first few days after it all broke. Um, Inga and I have been off to the IVF program. Uh, and Inga was just, uh, when we returned from overseas, sort of getting to a situation where she felt that her state of mind was such that she could go through that traumatic process again. And then all of a sudden, Ashbygate uh, descended, and um, she now feels that Ashbygate has cost her the opportunity of being a mother, and that's a shocking thing. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.